Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make another reverse dyed dress and I'm going to do this one just a little different. This dress is one of the cotton tiered dresses that you can find pretty much anywhere. I got this one from Walmart because I like the color of it. I have it turned inside out so those are the pockets that you see kind of hanging out beside the dress. I'm going to add a heart to the middle tier of this dress and I want to put it at a diagonal. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line on the dress where I'd like the center of the heart to be. Then I'm going to freehand the heart on the dress, grab that center line, and fold the dress in half. By the way, I'm going to put the heart on both the front and the back of the dress at the same time. I'm going to fan fold this heart and then I'm going to tie the line with some sinew. I'm using sinew for this project because I'm going to remove part of the color from this pink dress and the sinew is wax coated so it's not going to allow the color remover underneath the sinew lines and it won't allow the dye underneath there either. So every place where I put a sinew line and tighten it down really tight, that area is going to stay hot pink throughout the color removal and the dyeing process. Once I get the heart tied, I'm going to go ahead and put two more sinew lines right outside of this one just to give the heart a little bit more definition and make it stand out a little bit more. From here I'm going to go ahead and straighten the dress back out as much as possible and start tying some random sinew lines in the dress. I've used this technique for a t-shirt and for another dress and it turned out looking really cool. The lines give some interest to the dress without being overly busy. You can add as many lines or as few of lines in the dress as you want. I like to do bigger chunks of the dress at a time. So I tie bigger areas and I try to keep myself restrained and not add too many lines into each dress. It's all personal preference though. If you want to add a whole bunch of lines in, go for it. I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up just a little bit more, but if it's going too fast for you, if you'll click the settings icon, you can either speed up or slow down the video and watch it at a speed that's more comfortable for you.
For the color removal process, I'm going to use a product called Out White Bright Laundry Whitener. And I purchased mine at Walmart in the laundry aisle. It's usually next to the bleach products. It's not bleach, so it's not going to damage the dress or have to be neutralized the way bleach will. But that's usually where I find it in my store. If you can't find any at your local store, I have a link down below in the description for this video where you can purchase some from Amazon. I'm going to remove the color from several different items all at the same time. So I've placed them down inside of a plastic toter container and I'm going to start by sprinkling the out white bright over the top of all of the items. By the way, I'm doing this process outside because the out white bright does have a smell and I don't want that smell inside. I'm also wearing my respirator for the entire process because I don't want to smell any of the fumes or inhale any of the out white bright powder. I also want to mention any of the kitchen type items that I use when I tie dye. I don't use in the kitchen or around food products again. I have a pan that I dedicate solely to using with color removers and I also have several other utensils where I flip the shirts but I don't use those in the kitchen or around food. Now I'm going to pour boiling hot water over the top and you can see the out white brights start to bubble and fizz and it immediately starts removing the color. I haven't sped this part of the video up, so this is really how fast it works. I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up now, but I went ahead and left the dresses and the shirts in the out white bright solution for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then I took them to my utility sink and rinsed them all in really cold water. After that, I put them into my washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent, and I wash them using either a hot or warm cycle. It doesn't really matter. After they were finished in the washing machine, I put them into my soda ash solution, and I soaked them for about 20 to 30 minutes before wringing them out of my panda spin dryer. I was busy dyeing some of the other projects that you see here, so I put this one aside for a couple days, and by the time I got to it, it was completely dry. This isn't a super thick fold, so I could have actually gone ahead and dyed it while it was still partially damp. So I wasn't entirely sure what color to dye this dress. So I asked one of my sons, and he threw out a whole bunch of colors, two of which were purple and blue. So I decided to use both of those together on the dress. I want to muck dye this dress, so I've placed it down inside of a plastic dish pan which I purchased from Dollar Tree. And I'm applying ice right on top of the dress. I want the colors to be a little more watercolor and to have a softer feel. So I'm going to place the dye over the top of the ice. You may hear DOI referred to in some of the tie dye groups. That basically is just an abbreviation for dye over the ice. I also mentioned that I'm going to muck dye the dress. All that means is that I'm going to leave it down inside of the container where it sits in the melting ice and dye mixture. I'm going to start by applying grape from Dharma Trading Company in a stripe along one end of the container. Then I'm going to skip a space and use Snozberry from Dharma. Snozberry was a special muck color that was available in spring of 2022. I'm going to skip another space and use True Purple from Grateful Dyes. In the two remaining spaces, I'm using Sky Blue from Dharma and Periwinkle from Dharma. I noticed a little bit of ice that didn't have dye on it right at the very end, so I'm going to add a little bit more grape. Now I'm going to place a sprinkle of soda ash over the entire project and set it aside to allow it to process. 
At this point, I'm finished with this project. I'm not going to add any more ice or any more dye. I am going to leave the dress though for at least 24 hours after all of the ice melts and allow it to process. For part of that time, I went ahead and put the dress in the container. I just laid some sort of a lid over the top so that the sun wouldn't directly hit it, and I put it outside. You hear some tie dyers say that you can't mess with the muck or mess with anything that's processing muck at all or it'll mess it up. But in this case, blue and purple play nice together, so even if they mix a little bit, it's not going to cause a problem. It really is a little overblown. Now, if you're using some colors like secondary colors, say purple and orange together, that's a bigger deal. But in this case, I can move this container and my dress is not going to end up a muddy mess. Okay, so to rinse the dress, I took it to my utility sink and rinsed it like normal. I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I untied the dress and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I also went ahead and washed out my container using some Blue Dawn dish detergent over the top of the dress. It's not going to hurt. It's just going to be a little added water. When the water was rinsing almost clear, I put the dress along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent into my washing machine and washed it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so after I washed and dried the dress, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? This is the front of the dress, and you can see that heart over on that middle tier of the dress. And I think it looks really pretty. I also love the watercolor effect on this dress. That is what I was wanting to achieve. I wanted the colors to be really soft and to kind of just flow into one another. And it definitely does on this dress. I like the purple and the blue together too. I think my son did a good job picking those two colors. I think those colors work really well with the hot pink lines in the dress. I like some of the other colors in the dress as well like the lighter pink color that had to have come out of one of the blues I think maybe one of the purples I'm not entirely sure I think it looks really pretty though it's kind of a dusty rose type color it could even be just some remnants of the original dress color I don't know for sure but I like it do you see what I mean about the random lines on a dress like this I just think they work. I think that this design is very organic and it just flows with a dress that has this much fabric. So overall, I really like the dress. I think it turned out looking beautiful. But what do you guys think? Drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching me make the dress, I sure would appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching. And I hope you have a great day.